Winter Women in the CS 106 series. We have Molly McKinley, who is also a junior and a section leader for CS 106. She has entered as a software engineer at Google. Lynn Cuthreel is a coordinator for CS 198. She majored in CS theory for her undergraduate and is currently pursuing her co-terminal degree. So please help me in welcoming the future. <laughs> probably going to hand me some questions, but I'm going to start by asking each of you, and I'm going to start with Lynn, to tell us just a little bit about who you are, um, you know, where you grew up, how you chose to come to Stanford, and what made you choose the major in right now. So I'm Lynn. Uh, I grew up in Maryland, and I went to Stanford primarily because it seemed like it's kind of chill, laid back, sunny, California, whatever, not for engineering or anything. In fact, I, um, I think I intended to go in as like either English or maybe bio if I was feeling like daring and technical. Um, <laughs> but, you know, definitely creative writing potentially. Um, I, it really was kind of a weird accident that I fell into CS. Uh, I was, I remember my freshman year when I was like going through the, the paper list of courses, which now shows how old I am, I guess. Um, but, uh, and just like choosing the first CS class randomly, sort of expecting to drop out within the first week. Um, and I, I took the class and I liked it and I did well and I was like, oh, I should, maybe I should like take the next class. But I wasn't sure because I was still taking chem. And if I, I only had space for chem or CS. And I sort of was trying to decide, like, if, if I don't take chem now, I won't be able to do bio. Do I want to continue with CS? I don't even know if I want to major in it. Um, and then I decided, I was like, wait, I actually like my CS class. And I feel like in most other subjects, especially in chemistry, it was kind of like you get through it, and eventually you'll get to something awesome. And I was like, why would I not take a class that um, I actually enjoy in favor of a class I didn't like? So I took CS and then eventually just sort of kept going. What year are you now? Um, I'm a first year master's student. Thank you. Um, I think this is on. So my name is Molly, and I grew up here actually for a long time and moved to Seattle, Washington in eighth grade. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I was in high school. I kind of bounced around from flight attendant to veterinarian to a lot of other completely unrelated topics. Thought I was going to be a professional soccer player for a while. Um, that didn't work out. <laughs> but kind of fell into engineering in the end of high school and started doing robotics. And that kind of propelled me in the direction of science, technology, doing something that was uh, both creative but also technical. And when I got here uh, to Stanford, which was, you know, where I always wanted to be, realistically. Like, I grew up here and this was home. Um, and so came back happier than anything and took CS106A freshman year fall quarter because I was like, well, you know, CS, that has something to do with something interesting. Like, why not try it? And fell in love. And I also took an intro sem, which I think is the deciding factor of the fact that I ended up CS instead of SimSys, which for those of you that don't know, Symbolic Systems is another program that Stanford offers, which combines a lot of the more fuzzy, creative aspects of social sciences with the technical aspects of computer science. But I took an interest in with Terry Winograd and was sold immediately. Um, and now I'm a junior and I'm majoring in computer science, human computer interaction. And I love it. Um, hello, I'm Sophia. Um, I grew up in the area, so San Jose, uh, middle of Silicon Valley. Um, my dad was an engineer and my mom's a doctor and I didn't want to be a doctor. So I was kind of like, so I was like, yeah, you know, if somebody asks me and they're actually serious about it, like I'll say I want to be an engineer. Um, and my dad would, we had the computer, so my dad would sometimes be like doing stuff on it and I'd come and watch. Um, so I learned a little bit about programming um, when I was, you know, pretty small, maybe like five or six, but it was just like, I wanted to make like a little guessing game on the computer. So I made a little guessing game and I kind of moved on to like something totally different. Um, so it was sort of like always kind of on the radar, and then my high school um, had an AP Computer Science class and a Java class that I took. Um, but even after that, it was kind of like, yeah, you know, this was fun. Um, 
I actually, I actually related a lot to um, the person who made their name just like flash on the screen. So that was very much how I felt, where it was just like, I can calculate like imaginary bunny populations. But like, you know, I'm not exactly gonna say like, I wanna do this for the rest of my life. Um, so I came into Stanford thinking like, you know, maybe some sort of engineering, but maybe psych, like, uh, maybe like English or something. Um, and mostly I was just like, I'm gonna do like all sorts of different things. Um, so I think I probably had this idea where I just learned like a sample from every single um, discipline and then somehow graduate. Um, and then my mom was the one actually who really encouraged me um, my winter quarter freshman year to try and take a class that might actually give me some direction on what I wanted to do. Um, and she was like, you know, you like CS in high school, like why don't you try that? Um, so I was like, all right, like that seems like good advice, like I can try that. Um, so I sort of took 106B um, and I remember uh, the winter break before, um, I was like totally like very nervous about it. I was like, oh my gosh, like, I haven't done 106A, like I'm going to be totally out of my league here. Um, so I tried to like, get started because um, they had some of the course material online. And um, if you've done Stanford CS, uh, you know that they use libraries um, where they have sp Stanford specific things just to make the whole process a bit easier. Uh, but what that also means is that if you try to c write code in something that doesn't have those libraries, it doesn't work at all. Um, so I didn't know that. Um, so I was trying to just print like hello world, it was just a very basic thing. So I had all sorts of problems because like, you know, I was trying to use the Stanford library code without the Stanford libraries. Um, it was just like kind of bad news. Um, so that didn't really help my confidence very much. But um, the class itself happened to be a loss if I'd already learned in ABCS. Um, so in a sense like that was good because like it was, I found it relatively easy. It was also bad because like, I didn't get like this whole rush of excitement being like, wow, like, this is awesome. It was just like, yeah, you know, this is kind of stuff I already know, except I think kind of in line with the imposter syndrome, I just figured that everybody else already knew it too. So I was like, oh, this is probably just supposed to be like an easy class because everybody's learned this in 106A. Um, so when I got to the end of it, I was just figuring like, okay, like that was nice, like now let me move on to something else. Um, and I think really kind of a really critical factor there was the professor, Jerry Kane. Um, who gave me a lot of encouragement saying like, you should go on to 107, like you should keep going in this. Um, one time during one of, just when we were talking, he just sort of was like, just made this offhand kind of like, oh, I just assumed you were a CS major. I was like, I hadn't thought about that. Um, so kind of like a couple days into the next quarter, I ended up switching into the next CS class in the sequence. Um, and it was still then, like it was a very sort of series of gradual steps, um, I think. And that really continued throughout where there wasn't really this one shining moment where I was like, I'm going to be a CS major. It was just like, yeah, you know, 106B was kind of nice. Like, I guess I'll move on. And like 107 was like, you know, this is pretty cool. Like, I'm actually considering this now. Um, then I did a summer internship, which didn't go very well. But then the fall, I took uh, the introduction to the computer reaction class. I was like, okay, maybe, like, I could kind of see myself doing this. And then I declared. And I started section leading, which was really where I was like, yeah, like, cool. Like, this is the right choice. Um, but I think that was kind of an important message that I wish I'd heard earlier, which is like, I don't need to have this shining, brilliant moment where I like, dedicate myself fully to this. Um, you know, like the light from the sky, it just could be like, <laughs> all right, cool, like, let's see how far this takes me. Um, and that's kind of been um, kind of how I approach it. Oh, I'm a junior now, uh, majoring in CS. <laughs> um, raise your hand if you are a high school student here. Okay, we have a few. And um, what I'd like to do is ask each of you to tell us what advice you would give to a high school student who might vaguely sort of be sort of thinking maybe they might at least take a computer science course in college. So Molly, do you want to start? Sure. Um, so I didn't take APCS when I was in high school. and. Uh, might have done robotics, but I focused a lot more on the like management side of you know getting everyone to complete stuff and coming up with ideas and getting everyone on the same page. And so my forays into computer science were along the lines of, okay, what is a for loop? How am I going to write that in LabVIEW? And that was like about it. Uh, so when I first came into 106A, I was a little intimidated because uh, there were a lot of kids in my 106A class who had dabbled in CS kind of extensively in high school. And I haven't. And so the one thing I want to say is don't be discouraged. Like, you might not be the smartest person in that classroom, and that's going to be OK. It might take you a long time to get some concepts, and that's going to be OK. And none of it means that you're not an intelligent person or that you're not good at CS. What it means is that it's hard, and these people have already practiced it for god knows how many hours. And now you're going to get the chance to practice it for 
those many hours. And that's going to be a good thing. So I think that's what I would say. Lynn? Uh, I think that one uh, Yeah, I'd probably say, you know, it's all, it's all about confidence. So in terms of, like, not getting, um, I don't know, not feeling bad about yourself. Uh, the, big, the big thing, I think, is, like, don't be afraid of the jargon. So the thing that I've, that I've sort of learned, observed from section leading as well as just, like, general, uh, I don't know, observation, general observation, um, is that people who come in with experience, they, ha they don't actually have that much experience. People, like, they, I mean, they think they have a lot of experience and they have a lot of jargon. They can say a lot of acronyms, um, and you're not going to understand what they mean. And that's going to be, feel, you're going to feel sort of like you're not part of that little club. Um, but the thing is, is like, most people, what they self-teach themselves is no more than what we get through in 106B. Uh, so that's, you know, they could have self-taught for years, and most likely you will catch up with everyone within the first two quarters. Um, the issue I know I had was I was in 106A, and I was like, oh, I did well, but when I get to 106B, I'm going to be with the real engineers, and then I'm going to do horribly. And then after I did well in B, I was like, oh, now when I'm in 107, I'm going to go with the accelerated people in X, those like mythical, um, like super programmers, and then I'm going to fail. Um, but as it turned out, like it, you know, you you catch up pretty fast, and really, it's it's easy for people to look like they know more than they do because so much uh, there's so much, um, you know, there's startup language. There's like all of the, the language of open source, and you know that, and that's you know it's obviously a good way to communicate. But if you're not into that, um, or you don't have experience with that, it can seem like you know less than you do. Um, but there's a reason why lots of people can say that, and because it's something that's e uh, or lots of people talk that way, is because it's something that's easy to Google and easy to learn. Um, so it's something that you can learn as well, uh, and don't get intimidated by people who say that they have experience because. Yeah, uh, definitely like what Lynn said. I think kind of the counterpart of under underestimating yourself is overestimating other people. <laughs> um, so it actually took me like a few years to realize that like a lot of what you want to know in computer science you can figure out either by like buying a ten dollar book from like Amazon or like reading an online tutorial or just like Googling it. Um, and for some reason like that really surprised me because I think I had this very strong image in my head that there were some people who just kind of like sat down at a computer and knew what to do. And like it just kind of like flowed to them, and they just started typing, and then it worked. Um, so I get frustrated, like when I like sat down and like started typing and waiting for things to flow to me. Like it was just like, huh, this isn't working. <laughs> um, and I think I was really too hard on myself for a while about that. Um, so for example, anybody who's coded at all knows what debugging is, um, which is you write something and it doesn't work, and you need to figure out why. Um, and I think like instead of being in the mindset of like, oh, I did something wrong. Like, you know, I made a mistake here, being like, no, actually, like, debugging is a really important skill to have that you need to have. So it's like the more time you spend developing that skill, like, actually, the better off you are. So, like, don't write bugs, like, intentionally into your program. <laughs> but, like, you know, it's like, it's not a bad thing to be debugging. Or um, when, you know, you got started trying to learn how to um, do web programming, for example, there's a lot of, like, overhead where, like, it's hard. And it's like you have to get something set up on your computer, and your computer isn't cooperating, and you're just spending, you know, an hour doing something that's like, this should be trivial, this shouldn't be taking a long time. And then just realizing that's like that's part of the process that everybody goes through. Like it's not that you know you don't know what you're doing, that you're bad at it. It's just like this is just kind of part of what you do. Um, and I think the second part that I wish I had known in high school is like, like computer science actually is for something. So it's like one of six A and B, you're learning how to program. Usually in high school you're learning how to program. And I think if I'd seen the bigger picture, where it's like, we're not just writing for loops for the sake of writing for loops. We're writing them and like learning how to write them to do something that we care about. Um, so for example, like I'm really interested in like education. Um, and so you can use CS for education, as you see in Khan Academy, um, you know, teaching things online, if that works at all, figuring that out, um, you know, how it should work to like be the best. Or you know, if you're interested in green energy, um, there's kind of, you know, you could go out and just build a bunch of windmills and see, you know, just like test them. Or you could write a computer program that simulates a bunch of windmills. Um, and you know, you can guess which one's gonna be faster. Um, so I think stuff like that, where it's like, just think of like what you care about. If you care about biology, like biocomputation is huge. Um, it's like realizing that like all these fields that you care about, it's like it's not like there's you know your other interests in their CS. It's really like CS is gonna help you with those other things, and those other things are gonna help you with CS. I think if I'd seen that, I'd be a lot more interested in high school and continuing in computer science, because it wouldn't feel like I'm giving up all my other interests and feel like, oh, like this is just going to help me like do what I want to do better. 
So, Sophia, what would you say the most important lesson you've learned so far in computing? Um, gosh, most important. Um, and Molly and Lynn, it's coming to you next. Yeah. So, so what are you thinking? Oh man, this is a hard one. Um, I think one thing that resonated with me a lot was um, when Jocelyn in the panel before said, "Fake it till you make it." Um, because like I think something that's helped me a lot is just saying like, "Oh, you know, like it would be cool if." Like, not like, oh, I can do this and I believe in myself. Just like, oh, it'd be cool if, you know, like, I took this class. Um, and then, or, you know, it'd be cool if, like, I started trying to um, increase the gender balance in computer science. And kind of like when I started thinking about that, I was just like, oh, yeah, like, that would be cool. Um, and then just kind of saying, like, well, like, supposing that I knew how to do that, what would be the first step? And be like, well, I'd be researching a lot about it. And then after doing that, be like, well, supposing now, like, I knew what to do, like, what would happen next? And be like, well, you know, I talked to some professors about it. Like, how would I do that? Well, I'd email them. Um, and kind of just going through that sequence where it's like, not I need to have every single step laid out in place. Not, you know, if I start this yes major, I need to know what I'm doing like 20 years from now. But just like, I can take this very incrementally um, and just figure it out as I go. Because um, I think, you know, combined with stereotype threat, imposter syndrome, um, confidence, all that stuff, it's really easy to like overwhelm yourself before you start. I mean, like, I don't know what to do, you know, 10 steps from now, so I'm not going to do the first step. I think actually like having a shorter range of vision, saying like, you know, I'll figure that out after I do the first two steps. Um, I think that was probably um, the best lesson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, probably the most important lesson I learned was maybe to release a little bit of my perfectionism regarding like what I consider to be a success. Uh, certainly in high school, it was very much like I must be good at well. I, yeah, to a certain extent, it was something like, you know, I must be good at everything. Um, and when I started doing CS, I mean, CS is a very, like, is a very broad field, um, and I was successful in a lot of things. There's a lot of difficult stuff in CS, too, and sometimes I was not successful. Uh, but it, I learned, but from everything that I did, I learned, and I also learned that, that I could still, that, I mean, one, you know, one class doesn't define me or something like that. Um, but basically that there are so many aspects of CS that doing poorly in one aspect does not mean that you are not cut out for the other parts. It doesn't even necessarily mean that you're not cut out for that part. It all depends on, on you know, circumstances surrounding um, you and, you know, did you work hard enough in the class, stuff like that. Um, but mostly just that, uh, that I, you know, I, for most things I can do it. If I can't, that's for a couple things, that's okay. And Molly. Um, so a lot of the lessons that I've learned, I'm still learning. So take it with a grain of salt. But one of the things that I think is most important that I've, I've learned, but I obviously still have to remind myself of, is, is when to ask for help and when to give myself a, a little bit of a, cut myself a little slack. So you know, I kind of came in without a lot of the background in computer science that a lot of other people had. And I expected that it would take me just as long to figure something out as someone who'd done it, you know, for three years already. And when I, you know, it took me an extra 20 minutes to, like, finally understand something, I got a little frustrated with myself, like, why, you know, are you not smart enough for this, and, and took it personally. And I think I've learned to kind of put that aside and be like, well, I don't have enough experience in this yet. Obviously, this is just a reason to get more experience, to learn more about it, and use that person as a resource to ask them questions, because that's, you know, they have that knowledge and they're willing to share it. And so to be able to ask for help instead of banging my head against a wall in a closed room, like, I think that's the biggest thing. So one of the things that's interesting to me about these answers is not one of them said it was a data structure that did such and such or it was an algorithm. And one of the reasons I think that's really important is that you know, computer science is one of these disciplines that if you're going to be a professional computer scientist, you're going to be learning all the time. And so the lessons that they have been learning is how you keep on learning all the time and how you basically keep up with it and how you don't let yourself be stopped when you run into a little bit of a bump. So now I want you to close your eyes. Close your eyes. And you're imagining what you're going to be doing five years from now. OK, and Molly, you're going to go first. <laughs> Five years from now. You're allowed to open your eyes now. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, five years from now, 
I think I want to be somewhere in hopefully still Silicon Valley, but I want to be at a company that really, uh, so first of all, I want to be at a company. I'm probably going to go on co-term and get my master's, but uh, I'd like to, to do something in industry and figure out if there's a way to really make a difference in one specific field. And I haven't figured out what that field is yet, but I don't want to do something that's just going to be another, you know, handy dandy app that, you know, adds some numbers together or displays pictures of your friends. I like, I want something that's going to really make a difference in a niche market and like hopefully make people's lives better and solve a really big problem. And whether that's going to be on the engineering side or on the uh, human computer interaction side or on the product management side, like I just want to attack an issue and like really take charge of it and solve it. And you're going to do that. <laughs> okay, then. All right. Uh, so I guess I guess I see myself being somewhere other than Silicon Valley, in the because I while I do want to work in Silicon Valley, I'm also <laughs> eager to see what sort of opportunities there are outside of just the normal like software engineer in Silicon Valley field. I still haven't really decided whether or not I want to go full on uh, engineer for a long period of time, or if I want to do engineer for a little bit and then move on to something in business. Um, but I really want to sort of explore. <coughs> Maybe, you know, because I know that there are a lot of opportunities out there in a bunch of different fields where a technical background would be helpful and uh, in a lot of different places that are really exciting. And so I sort of see myself exploring what all the different options are. And so maybe not necessarily in one particular company in Silicon Valley, um, but maybe somewhere else and seeing what they, what's out there before I decide if I want to come back here. Cool. Sophia. Um. So I just talked about not thinking too far ahead, but um, I guess in five years, like, just like really, all I can say is I think just really the most generic thing was just like doing something with computer science and something else where I feel like I'm really making a difference, um, where like it really means something, because um, it's just like you know, like Stanford CS education is incredible. Um, it's like what you can do when you graduate is incredible, and I just want to like do something with that that like I feel is fulfilling.